Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. A, a chicken chick, he used to like these. He's been primarily eating mice very happily, but uh, we'll see if he wants a, a chick. You like this chick, huh? Now you're sort of standoffish, huh? Yes, now maybe. Well, this may be a maybe. What's the matter? You can't find its head? Can I give you one without a head? <laughs> you did. Oh no, there's the head. Oh, no, it's that's dang, a wing. That's a wing, yeah. It's missing. He's like, you're giving me a defective chick. was like, are you really dead? Well, now you're really going to be dead. And as far as I'm concerned, always uh, uh, when they bite the, uh, the food item, that's uh, one or two less drops of venom that they can apply to me if something goes off the rails. Hi. Come on. Look, you've known me since 2005 or so. Have I ever given you something to eat the wrong way? All right, well, I'm just going to leave that since he's probably pretty irate at me. <laughs> although it's I, headless. I don't want that. Al although, you know, he's, I don't, he, he doesn't have an illness or something and I could easily transfer that to another cage. I'm just going to, going to leave him play with it if, if he can figure it out, he can figure it out. Oh, hi there. Hi. Mr. E. I know I gave you something to eat earlier today. We're tickling your belly. Hi. He's trimmed down quite a lot. Uh, I did give him a, a little bit bigger rat. I got a fresh supply in from my supplier. Uh, but since he's not terribly active and he's you know not moving around and I don't let him out very much anymore especially now since uh, we're in the middle of this pandemic uh, and I don't want to go to the emergency room by myself with a king cobra bite um, so yeah he's uh, he he doesn't get furloughed at all the Jeraka looks very interested in something to eat. And let me get a hook to open the door because the Jeraka could be out and on my hand and before I could do anything. Um, well, it bit it, so we'll see if it will eat it. Um, I think it, it, I've given it chicks before. Um, I can still see Slinky uh, nosing the thing, looking for the right end to, to eat. He's not, uh, he's discriminating, unlike other snakes that we have, that even if it has a head, they still can't figure out how to <laughs> eat it. Um, if, if he doesn't eat that, uh, I'm certain I will find uh, uh, something for him to eat. Well, since we've got this chick head, uh, over here and see Mr. Brown, who really likes trick heads. Come on. And Mr. Brown is always a very exciting snake to, to feed because you never can tell what he's going to do. He is just so lightning quick and totally spastic. 
uh, feeder, uh, but you know he's got his trick head and uh, he's going to uh, enjoy that. Oops, sorry, dude. <laughs> I didn't mean to startle you. Whoops. He's like, only a trick head. Where's the rest of it? Well, since you know Sleeky has been here. For such a long time, and Sleeky's back at the door, he can't figure out what the hell to do with that. <laughs> um, so, I might give Mr. Brown that one, or somebody else. Uh, I'm not worried about Slinky passing off some disease uh, to another snake in the cage. Slinky is acting normal. Is that what you're looking for? You're looking for, you just can't eat it without a pecker, can you? Huh? Yeah. That's the right place, dude. What, I fooled you once? Now notice when I drop things, my eyes don't leave the snake. Uh, I've learned not to be distracted by other things going on and lose my attention on the thing that could really do me some damage. And that's a venomous snake with the cage door open. Now, I opened its beak, which is my trick, when, you know, snakes are having a hard time finding the, the correct end to feed on. Uh, opening the beak opens the mouth. Apparently they really detect and home in on, you know, the scent from animals' oral cavities. Come on, dude, you're really making this difficult. Maybe I'll just give you mice. Seem to seem to do those okay. Was terribly interested in the chick. Well, he used to be a big chick fan. You know, maybe he's getting old and uh, chicks no longer appeal to him because his <laughs> testosterone level has decreased. <laughs> huh? Yes? No? Maybe? No? No? Alright, well let me take this one. Uh, I, know, I know a snake that will eat this uh, no problem. Sorry, Slinky. This guy won't care if it's headless, legless, or anything. This is the Terrans Viper. Uh, Macrovipera tyrannica, the remaining member of the synchronized eating team. It's a very, very beautiful uh, group of vipers from Uzbekistan. As you can see, he didn't care if it had a head or not. <laughs> He's definitely, you know, interested, but, you know, I think, uh, come on. Folks, this is why it takes me forever to, to feed my collection is because I've got snakes with 
that just take forever to figure out if they want to eat it or not. And then we've got things like this who would eat uh, anything uh, pretty much uh, that came into the cage. So uh, we're going to ignore him for now. This is the second Jararaka. Anybody home? All right. These aren't terribly warm. They don't have a big heat signature right now because they've been sitting in the bucket for a while, mostly because of the uh, Rhino Viper. Uh, uh, it took forever to take a drink, um, but that doesn't seem to be bothering Mr. Jararaka or Miss Jararaka. Bothrops Jararaka from Brazil. All right, once again with Mr. Brown, you don't open the cage with your, your fingers. Over here, dude. There you go. You got it? Another nice chick head down the hatch. Mr. Brown will get something other than a couple of chick heads, although, you know, he is a well-nourished snake and uh, you certainly don't need to uh, feed him on a weekly basis, but he still gets a little treat uh, no matter what. latch is not quite unlatched. Hi, yep. Now this is a bit odd for you because it's headless and it's a different scent. Ew, get that out of my face, huh? Yeah, that doesn't look like an enthusiastic response at all. It's still alive, I promise. <laughs> Yeah, it's not terribly hot, and uh, I don't think I've given her a chick before. Let's see if this, uh, this gal is interested. She's poised uh, for action. Well, yeah. <laughs> Ew! What was that? Yeah, I mean, these guys are mostly eating, uh, eating mice, so now that She's a wild-caught snake, um, so this particular chick will not go into anybody else's cage uh, or get offered to anybody else at this point. Um, so uh, we'll just uh, dispose of it, unfortunately. It will go to waste, but I'm not going to, uh, uh, to attempt to give it to somebody else just to... Uh, to get rid of it. Uh, she's the mother of the baby. Okay, this girl got fed yesterday, but you know I'm trying to get some weight back on her because she uh, uh, she gave birth to those 13 babies, and uh, yesterday she was highly offended when I offered her a chick. So she she lay, ate again reluctantly later in the day, but. Uh, Today looked very interested, so uh, she'll get that extra extra treat. I want to get some weight back on her. Um, and believe me, from keeping these uh, species, if they're interested in food, you try not to dissuade them. You, you feed them when they want to eat as much as they want because they will go off feed. You know, here you can see this little male. He's finishing off. Uh, a mouse, uh, a fuzzy mouse that I gave him. Believe me, it was a major undertaking and battle to get him to uh, finally uh, strike and hold that morsel. As you can see, he's, he's a bit aggro, as uh, uh, Steve Irwin would say. Come on. All right. Well, that's not really an ideal position. Uh, he may drop that. Um, so I'm going to have to keep my eye on it and decide whether I want to uh, uh, annoy him some more so he eats. 
Um, I'm very sensitive to teasing these guys because they get easily stressed out and uh, I had one die uh, after tease feeding it. It ate the mouse successfully after some provocation and then an hour later when I came back in the room it, uh, it had died and uh, I can only think that it got uh, really stressed out uh, in the process. So we're just going to shut this door and quietly move away because I want him to eat it, although he may spit it out also. Here's another uh, large female in Solaris uh, that is uh, quite happy to, uh, uh, to get her tucker. Uh, she's actually going to get moved uh, soon down into the cage below um, just to give her some a little bit more space and I'll move her log down and I'll repurpose this cage. Uh, I think I'm going to maybe put the uh, red spot pit viper in there. Um, I'm not sure what I'll do or maybe uh, one of the bush vipers. Uh, but uh, uh, she's uh, Captive born here on Christmas Eve in 2016 um, and has been doing quite well. I haven't tried to breed her, um, mostly because, uh, uh, again, these babies are quite heavily care intensive until, for a while, until they get feeding and, and then uh, then they sort of take off on their own, uh, but uh, males are always a problem, and you know, when you, when you breed snakes, you're probably going to get, you know, some sort of mix of male and female. It's just, you know, genetically the, the way things happen. So we'll let her uh, dine. Alright, these have been sitting for a while since I've been waiting for... Uh, uh, the rhino viper to take a drink and Mr. Snooty has been sort of not himself it may be breeding season he uh, he really hasn't uh, been eating and sort of defensive uh, um, so that's already in his cage so I'm gonna leave it there I'll clean it out tomorrow morning if it's uneaten unfortunately I I hate to waste uh, food but uh, uh, I don't like transferring it to another cage once it's been inside just in case he ha he's not eating for a reason like he has some sort of uh, uh, illness and I don't want to pass that along to another snake. And he of course is the uh, sharp-nosed pit viper from Southeast Asia, Denichistrodon acutus. Uh, he used to be part of the a Kistradon uh, complex. They thought he was related to the water moccasin, cottonmouth, uh, Malayan pit viper, Namushi. Uh, they're all uh, sort of lumped into one group, but, but now he's in his own uh, genus all by himself, Denichistradon. Um, these are finger and hand rotters. Uh, they, will, uh, they will liquefy your hand, which isn't very uh, pleasant, uh, especially if you want to use your hand again. But they are beautiful. They are beauty. Just to mix things up for this uh, rhino viper, uh, we'll give her a uh, chicken chick. Um, we saw the pupil dilate. We saw her inch a bit forward. And slam. And uh, <laughs> Well, she didn't detach the head partially. Uh, you know, that usually ha happens when they're frozen uh, and I'm trying to pull them apart because they're packed in the bag uh, pretty tightly. Uh, but uh, knowing her, that won't, uh, won't stop her from eating it. So we'll just let her go.